Welcome to the Google Cloud Security Showcase, a special web series where we'll focus on security use cases that customers can solve with Google Cloud. My name is Jessica, and I'm a product manager at Google Cloud. Today, we'll be walking through one of the top questions we get from customers. How can I protect my GCP virtual machines from rootkits and bootkits? Shielded VMs are hardened compute engine virtual machines that offer protection from persistent threats like rootkits and bootkits. This is possible using the platform security features offered by Shielded VM. A virtual trusted platform module, or TPM, secure and measured boot on top of UEFI firmware, and integrity monitoring. Shielded VM is the default VM option across Compute Engine and is available to all customers at no additional charge. So it's now easier than ever to spin one up. Start at Compute Engine VM Instances to create a new instance. Give your instance a name and then head on over to change the boot disk to the OS image of your choice. Since Shielded VM is now the default for most modern OSs, at this point, all you have to do is pick an OS and version. You can confirm that this OS supports Shielded VM features based on this helpful description. Finally, hit the Create button and you're good to go. Next, we're going to take a closer look at integrity monitoring which can help you understand and make decisions about the low-level integrity state of your Shielded VM instances. Integrity monitoring relies on the measurements created by Measured Boot, which use Platform Configuration Registers, or PCRs, to store information about each boot sequence. Integrity monitoring results are written out to stack driver logging. Here, you can filter to just show Shielded VM integrity logs. As you can see, there are both early as well as late boot events available here. Early boot is the boot sequence from the start of the UEFI firmware until it passes control to the bootloader. And late boot is the boot sequence from the bootloader until it passes control to the operating system kernel. Look into the early boot report event and expand its JSON payload. Since the most recent boot sequence matches that of the integrity baseline, a known good or assumed healthy boot sequence, you can see that the integrity validation has passed. Note that you can also use integrity monitoring to establish the provenance of the instance you're looking at. For example, under resource, you have a record of the instance ID, project ID, and zone that this instance lives in. So far, you've seen what a successful integrity validation looks like. On the other hand, if either the early or late boot parts of the most recent boot sequence don't match the baseline for the VM, an integrity validation failure would be expected. To illustrate this, First, SSH into the VM. Next, tamper with the VM's bootloader, the first program that runs when a machine starts, by changing a single string in the grub bootloader on disk. Note that this is a very simple proof of concept, but in practice, an attacker could instead modify the bootloader to load a malicious kernel, gain persistence on the machine, or perform other behaviors characteristic of rootkits and bootkits. Now that this VM has been tampered with, you can check back with integrity monitoring to see what that looks like. As you may recall, late boot is the boot sequence from the bootloader until it passes control to the OS kernel. Since the bootloader for this VM has been modified, it's expected that the most recent late boot sequence won't match the integrity baseline for the VM, which should result in an integrity validation failure. Sure enough, you can see this failure here in Stackdriver, specifically caused due to a discrepancy in PCR4, which measures the bootloader. 
Remember that you can always create custom actions based on what you see here. For example, you can use PubSub and Cloud Functions to create automation to terminate shielded VM instances that fail integrity validation. So, now we've seen how integrity monitoring can help catch anomalous changes while still allowing the operating system to boot successfully. This offers the flexibility to investigate the integrity failure and respond in a way that makes the most sense for your workload. However, for the ideal security posture, you wouldn't want the VM to boot at all in this potentially compromised state. This is where Secure Boot, another feature of Shielded VM, comes in. Secure Boot helps ensure that the system only runs authentic software by verifying the signature of all boot components and halting the boot process if signature verification fails. As shown here, you can enable Secure Boot on an existing shielded VM as long as the VM has been stopped. You can also turn on Secure Boot at the time of VM creation using the console, gcloud, or API. Note that Secure Boot is not enabled by default because unsigned drivers and other low-level software might not be compatible with it. If appropriate for your workloads though, Google recommends enabling Secure Boot. With that important change made, Let's go ahead and start the VM again. Now you can verify that Secure Boot indeed prevents this VM with a tampered bootloader from booting. You can do so using the Serial Console, built to troubleshoot inaccessible instances. Here, we can see that Secure Boot detected the tampering and prevented the instance from booting. That was a quick overview on how Shielded VMs can help protect your workloads from threats like rootkits and bootkits. Thank you for tuning in. Please visit cloud.google.com security for more content from Google Cloud experts.